bone saw and all oh, right because you can I I see I see what you got there if it's surge cost was paid, deal three damage to target creature or player. Damn. Mm. Yeah, that is a pretty dope combo. Yeah. Quite well, dope. here's the thing. You uh, you might not have um have noticed it that well, but because you hit that swamp, you locked uh, because you hit that swamp with the thought harvester, you locked me out of the game for four fucking turns. Yeah, I, I I'm sorry. I I for the record, no, you the don't need to game. apologize for it. But I was sitting on double uh, remorseless punishment and and uh. Pressing the service. Um, what else? Uh, what else did I have? Here's the thing. Uh, oh, and I had double tyrant of Valica in, uh, in my hand too. I was really hoping that I could get out uh, uh, specifically my headrun crawler with uh, enough mana to act uh, with enough uh, mana on draws to actually tr uh, to actually trigger uh, a lot of my lower removal spells like grasp of darkness and tar snare and then uh, bring them into my higher my higher removal stuff like remorseless punishment and pressing the service pressing the service is fucking great for the record i'm glad i got the cast in game 1 uh, but it the thing that this deck card. actually wants to do is you know get some of the smaller critters out and then and then use uh the surge archetype uh, the surge keyword on on them in order to you know gain specific advantages because surge, when played correctly, surge is honestly really fucking powerful. It's not as good as dash was though, and dash, dash had problems. Dash had a lot of problems. You exiled my witness to the no, you exiled my witness to the end in the first game, but I got a cast in the second game. So, and and you also, you hit my cinder hellion. I wanted to play with this thing too. Yeah, but yeah, my big issue is that apparently I don't have I don't have enough critters. I probably should have uh, scrapped the Strider harnesses, but what the hell? Uh, but um, oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I had problems with both land uh, lands and uh, and creek and uh, creatures. Also, these goblin dark dwellers are really really cool. Uh, giving the ability to effectively flash back any of my lower uh, removal spells is really nuts. Specifically, Grasp of Darkness and Tar Snare. Yeah. Um, I, when I was testing, I had no problems at all, but I wasn't testing against, a, I wasn't testing against the Devoid, nor was I testing against anything. I was just doing draw testing. But I was consistently getting to my fifth mana, should. and I would usually have a, a Hedron Crawler out during testing. So, um, it just, it wasn't, it just didn't show up today. That is the problem with de dealing with, um, with card games from time to time. You need to do more than two fucking draw tests. Ugh. Well, yeah, right. It's it's in the execution, precisely. Um, How the no, fuck my, did you think you were going to get the, enough mana to cast a Seaver of Form? Even in game one, you, you ended on, what, seven? Well, I do have some ways to get those 1-1, one, one, Colorless, Eldra... I, got, I actually have a, a small number of ramp cards. One of them... Of course, but famously the Hedron Crawler. That's a source of mana. There is also cards that produce one-one creatures like the Warping Wall, Warping Whale, that will put Eldrazi Scion creatures on the battlefield that has sacrificed this creature, add a colorless mana to your mana pool. Uh, also, Abstruse Interference, which I'm running too, of counter spell and produce a one-one Eldrazi Scion with that mm -hmm. ability. Uh, so I had some ways also that I was, because I am running 24 lands, I was usually getting my land plays on time. Um, it, it, I, I, I had definitely gotten mean during this matchup. I even prefaced the match saying that you got to get your combo off, but hey, if I would have gotten the, tyrant, the tyrant's realize, combo like, off, that would, that would have swung the game for me. Right. Because then feel bad your, your because only I out for said. it would be either <laughs> Lidvala and bring our deceiver a form, and I can keep swinging with it. So, like, of course, on the subject of combo decks, how the question is, how do you defeat a deck that has to execute a combo in order to win the game? And the answer, you rush of course, them down. Rush them down, deny them the circumstances that allow the combo to go off, like having enough mana to even pull it off in the first place. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, exactly. That game would have ended very differently if I didn't use a control strategy from the beginning, because control is definitely a good answer to combo decks. Uh, 
control is a viable answer to combo decks early on, but the the best way to kill a combo decks is with aggro. And I was pleased to see that it, there was at least one multicolor card in this set that actually supported my decision to run blue and white, which I, was a color combination that I had not run oh, right. in a while. Oh, I didn't pull Mage. My bad. Most, uh, mostly, uh, mostly because I'm not actually running the the rest of the uh, col uh, the rest of the void uh, the rest of the devoid package. So flare drone is here, but um, he's not very important. He's just you know here. I like devoid. I think devoid is honestly a really cool keyword. Oh my god! Uh, but a as as you were showing off, without the without the rest of its pack, without the rest of the package, it kind of just is there. I, mean, I tell you what, running flare drone. In, in fours versus alongside, uh, like, I mean, even your Hedron Crawler would be able to get the Flare Drone ability off. That Honestly, opponent loses uh, the one thing that, that I would have uh, liked to have done would have been Flare Drone at four with uh, Dimensional, uh, with Dimensional, um, uh, uh, with the, the Dimensional, the two, the two drop that's got the bounce effect. Because that bounce effect is nice with the Flare Drone. That would be the Dimensional Infiltrator. Yes, yes. Infiltrator, that one. So and that you would said this be is blue white a... flyers. This is blue white Eldrazi. It is, they're, it they're, is blue they're different. They I are different had... things. I casted a flyer in each of the two games that we played, and usually pretty early on. And going up against turn one or turn turn two flyers sucks. I, sh I should know this because I've lost a turn one, turn two flyers many times in my career in Magic. How about a turn six flyer, Linvala, the Preserver? I think a five five with flying is the definition of. I just pooped myself a little. Only just a, a little, little bit, though. though. It was a 6-6 so, six, six with flying. That would be a full pound in my trousers. So, all in all, I actually like Oath of the Gatewatch uh, for, on its uh, set design. The story here is kind of subpar. I mean, Chandra nuking the fuck out of, uh, out of Kozilek is really cool and all, but it's like, oh, you'll notice that we're not actually showing off any of the... Uh, any of the story uh, cards in here, and that's because a lot of the story cards are tied to the uh, uh, to the formation of the Gatewatch, and the Gatewatch was an interesting concept that didn't actually do any fucking thing. Yeah, nah. I wish Funny. the Gatewatch would have been more important. the The Gatewatch has exactly two events under their belt: they fight the Eldrazi and Zendikar, and then they get their ass handed to them by Nicol Bolas. That's all that happened with them. Got the ass handed to them. And we already played the show where they got their ass handed to them by Nicol Bolas. So, there's that. I like a lot of the individual cards here. I think that the theming for the Eldrazi with Devoid, specifically, is really nice. There's a lot of really, really cool Eldrazi in here. I think the uh, Emrakul El Aurora is here, right? Uh. Um, I think... I think there is an M. Rakul card in here somewhere. Let me confirm that. Of course, by organizing cards according to mana cost. Well, Kozilek the Great Distortion is the conspicuous superlative card being a 12-12 that you cast for 10. It looks like M. No, no, no. Uh, M. Rakul's Aurora is a really tiny critter. It's a, it's, a one, it's, a one, it's a 1x flyer. Um, I think it. I, I think it's... Uh, it, it's It's really cool, okay? There are a lot of really cool individual cards in here. I don't think the set actually comes together all that well. Like Cinder, like Cinder Hellion, very much wants to, you know, be a red control, a red control thing with a big enough body to actually trample over stuff. But at five, it's relatively difficult for uh, red to get there. And red has actually a lot of problem with a really cool stuff on the higher end of the spectrum for once, and no ways to actually get there because it's red, and red doesn't, and red doesn't do ramp or card draw that well. The cantrips in here specifically are really fucking nice. Uh, you saw the uh, blue the blue cantrip that Cloud's running has got uh, makes a target creature unblockable and draws you a card. The red one's got uh, is expedite gives a creature haste and draws a card. What what does the green one do? Is the green one regenerate? I will confirm this. It is probably a one drop card. Yeah, uh, uh, the, uh, cantrip bind, means a, it, a one CMC uh, uh, draw a card. Um. Shit, does green have one? Yeah, I'm there's a full cycle right here. Uh, fucking, maybe it's a two drop. Oh, right, well, Bonds of Mortality draws you a card when it ETBs. It's an enchantment type. But that's enchantment, it's not an instant. Right. See, the thing is, is that there, I mean, I see Expedite here. 
I see slip through space, which is here. Um, black doesn't black doesn't have a cantrip either. So I'm pretty no, sure black's got not a, a full uh, cycle. Doesn't black get a uh, uh, graveyard recovery uh, cantrip that draws him a card? Cantrip recovery card. Get a card from the graveyard. Draw a card. Uh, let's see. Sky scour, corpse churn. Well, Corpse Churn has put the top three cards of your library in the graveyard, then return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. For low drop cards. Um, so, no, I'm not seeing cantrips for I black either. I could have there was a full cycle of cantrips in this set. Huh. Oh, well. Honestly, well, but... I mean, it, it, coming, uh, coming back to it, um, I like this set. I do. I don't think it comes all together all that well. Cert, all the, a lot of the keywords in here are really cool. They're just, they're pretty underpowered, honestly. Surge requires a lot of low drop spells that um, don't actually uh, combine with the creature, that don't actually combine with the creatures all that well. Uh, support requires you to have one relatively large creature or a bunch of smaller creatures that you, know, you get to swarm out your opponent with, except a lot of the good support cards are ex ridiculously expensive. Uh, Devoid. Um, with its full archetype is relatively nice, but uh, putting Devoid on a bunch of the uh, colored Eldrazi just doesn't honestly put the, uh, doesn't honestly make a really good deck on on, on its own. Like you'll notice that Cloud, uh, Cloud's running uh, a good portion of the Devoid uh, package, but none of the green stuff, and that's because well, you don't want to go into five color for this. It, it just ruins the consistency, despite the fact that Devoid is a five color deck. It's actually a six color deck. Right. Um, there is also, there's a legendary core creature that also relies on each of the five colors. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up real That's quick. That's right, the ally stuff is here too, Revolt, right? N not Revolt, but, um, there's, a, there's an ally keyword. Uh, it's Cohort, yeah, Cohort. Cohort is, is really fucking cool and is objectively fucking terrible. Huh. It's a worst outlast. And Outlast was a was a mechanic that didn't fucking work the first time they printed it either. Yeah, uh, but yes, right. It's I like this set. General I do. I don't think it comes together all that well, but it is a cool set to play with. What do you think, Mister Cloud? I think that the Eldrazi make for an interesting deck building experience, pretty much wherever they show up. But that was. First and foremost, what came to mind is, oh shit, here we go again. You know, how how quickly can we get one of these big bosses out, and what are the means to doing it in the midst of a chaotic situation against an overwhelming adversary? Um, while it wasn't running Kozilek the Great Distortion, I did enjoy building a deck that already knew how the story was going to end. I just had to piece together the bridge to it with the low drop building and pinging the opponent and some gameplay on the path to getting one of the big game enders out. It's a lot of fun. I really wanted to cast Fall of the Titans too. This is this is the uh, story <laughs> of him where Chandra nukes the fuck out of Kozilek. It's very cool. And uh, I did enjoy playing this set. I'm glad you picked it out, Mr. Gerdet. Mm, yeah, maybe next time I'll actually win a game. Yeah. Yeah. Need to maybe run more time than 13 remember... fucking critters. 24 lands. Mm, well, I'm... Um, you gotta run 24 land lands. <laughs> yeah, my land count is 24. Well, I really fucked you up then. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, you hit you hit my swamp game too, and that shut me out of the game for four fucking turns. Yeah. Yeah, I fucked up. But no, you that's also, not you I fucking mean, we up. Could, we could have done... advantage of my poor deck building skills. Yeah. Well, just... You know, practice makes perfect. Uh, not for me. And anyway, also, this has been us uh, really, exploring really Ultra the Gatewatch. <laughs> uh, next time it is Cloud's turn to pick out something. And hopefully he'll pick out something that I can actually do more things with. And hopefully the next time I offer Gerd at an extra game, he will take me up on it. Because it's all in the execution. Mm. Yeah. Be safe, everybody. Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs>